now that we've got the uh, the uh, two sets of bearings, the bearing seats uh, set, we've got to come back in and we've got this little universal joint. You can kind of see it right there. Can I get a focus? Yeah, probably. We've got this little universal joint that will uh, go from the motor over to the uh, shaft itself. And what I have to do is I have to come in and uh, and cut a hole or cut the shaft down to that size. Now I really can't do it out on the end here. Let me see if I can bring this in a little closer. I really can't do it out, out on the end of the shaft here because the center is in the center hole. So I'm going to start about a quarter inch in and cut uh, oh, probably a quarter inch of shaft down to the correct size and then later on come back in and cut off that excess piece. So now we're making the outer rings for the armature of the generator and the way I'm doing that is I'm taking this plate of aluminum and I'm uh, basically punching a hole through it with, uh, with my lathe. I think we're almost through. I've already cut the other side and then I've flipped it around and I'm, now we're going to come in and probably, hopefully, it's going to punch through any second and we'll end up with that disc falling out and then we'll have um, have the um, the whole set for the beginning and I'll come back in a minute once we get this punched out and uh, we'll see what uh, what we're doing okay we punched the hole out that's happening now we're going to cut that first ring and what I'm actually going to do is cut two rings out of this, a smaller one and a larger one. I just kind of do a step up to cut the rings. And then um, we do that twice, of course, because we need four rings. And then that should fit around the, uh, the uh, sphere fairly smoothly. We want three quarters of an inch distance between the sphere and the inner ring. So we're going to cut those and see how it goes. Okay, we're cutting the second, um, the second disc, the second set of rings. And we're going to get two rings out of this one, just like here. Uh, we got two rings out of, out of the first one. They're kind of messed up right now, but once we take them back in and clean them up and square them up a little bit, they'll be, they'll be just fine. So, uh, probably another 15 or 20 minutes of cutting. We've cut one side here, and now we flip it, flip it around and, uh, and cut the other side. Okay, we got the rings on the little south bin because uh, it's a quieter machine, and, uh, and there's no reason to run the big, the big lathe for such a small, fragile sort of approach. Basically, what I'm just doing is squaring up all the edges getting rid of all the garbage that happened from cutting it out of the uh, out of the plate just bringing it back to some some kind of semblance of squareness so I got uh, I've got two of them done already this is the third one I got one more after that Okay, the rings are, uh, they're cut and they're sized and I still have to finish them, but uh, I'm pretty well done for the day. You can see that, uh, let's bring it up here, we need three quarters of an inch distance around each ring. And that's, well, it's not quite three quarters, about half inch, but uh, hey, you know, it's close enough. And if it isn't close enough, we'll go ahead and recut them and we'll make them three-quarter. There's the smaller one and that one goes right about there and uh, and that's um, that's where it lands for the day. Well it turns out that yesterday's um, uh, aluminum rings uh, aren't going to work. For one they're a little bit small and uh, he really needs that extra room to uh and here's uh here's what we got looks like about a half an inch and he said he's going to need three quarters of an inch to be able to wrap the uh coils around the the um 
ring. Also, he said, well, we, I don't really want it square. So, hey, this is definitely not going to work. So we've taken, uh, and, uh, and I also talked to him, and he said that it's fine to use uh, steel. So I have some 3 8 uh, rod here, and we're going to spin around. Here it is right here. And I think this is going to work out pretty well. If we look at it here, we got a, a nice uh, circle that I bent on my little, uh, you know, Harbor Freight Bender, which is an incredible little tool. Uh, if you don't have one, it's well worth getting it. You don't use it that often, but when you do, it's just priceless. Except this time, uh, it's not big enough. And if you look down here, I'm using my biggest die, and uh, and the um, and it still needs to go another inch. So basically, what I'm going to do is what I did here, oh, three or four years ago. I uh, made a die to fit a specific need that I had at that time. So now I'm going to make one in between these two sizes. Um, and uh, I found a piece of metal that's. Swing back around. Where is that piece of metal? Ah, here it is. Um, it's a uh, the bottom of a uh, some sort of little tank or something like that. And but this the bottom it, part here, the plate is pretty thin. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and chuck it up on the lathe and um, and trim that bottom off, kind of open it up. And then go ahead and do what what I did with that other one. Put some supports in there and uh, and and a centerpiece in there, and uh, and we'll be able to use that as our forming tool to come in and give ourselves another quarter of inch of of um, of diameter. So we'll uh, go ahead and chuck that up and. Uh, I'll walk you through it as we do it. Okay, we uh, take this, open up the chuck, and the three jaws, jaws fine here because we're not really looking for accuracy. All we're doing is pulling the outside cap off of this with um, some kind of cutting head. And I don't exactly know which one yet, but we're going to look and see if we can find one that's going to do the job. And I think this one will probably just be able to bury itself right in there without any problems. Now the only problem I see is quite possibly my lathe won't reach all the way over there. Because that's kind of a long way. It looks like it's going to be a problem. Yep. So we'll just uh, flip it around and do it on the other side. Let's see. We could probably do it that way. Nope, it's not going to work that way either. Okay. Let's see if we got something else. And we may not. I don't see anything that's going to work out. So we're gonna, just going to trade out these two, uh, these two bits here. And then we'll have plenty of room at that point. Flip one over. I don't know why I'm always kind of reluctant to uh, to flip out bits or to change things out, and you know, I, it always surprises me how little time it takes. <laughs> Okay, got that tightened up. That's tight. Let's crank up our... Let's put it on the slow speed. 
and we just come in and just dive in here. And I'm thinking we've got, you know, an eighth of an inch of metal there to cut away. Very big deal. Big enough to want to put a little on Heated up. <laughs> there we go. Just way too easy. Like a tin can, it just pops right out. We can chuck that. Throw this back in there and just kind of clean it up a little bit and uh, get it to. Uh, round off side's in pretty good shape, so uh, that's kind of a done deal. Yeah, so we've got one little catch right there. Looks like it's not quite hitting, but we've got a nice rounded surface and there's no sharp edges and that's all, all that counts at the moment. We'll come in with a, a little uh, half round file and knock that out. Alright, that's good enough. Okay, so now we've got to find a center. And uh, the last time I know I used um, a center out of, you know, some of the uh, um, some of the dies because I knew I wasn't going to use a real, real small one. But this time I think I better uh, find myself a piece of stock and get it in there. That'll probably do the trick. Let's see how big it is. <laughs> 